Look at this rotor bit. Are you kidding me? I gotta admit, I'm kind of intimidated. But I'm also kind of excited to see what this bad boy can do. Looks kind of medieval. This video is sponsored by Find by Tool, the online seller of this as well as other fine bits and woodworking tools. I'm going to show you how to get amazing repeatable results for your furniture and other woodworking projects using these templates from the King's Fine Woodworking Rocking Adirondack. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get these templates and plans to build the chair. This Rocking Adirondack will be featured in an upcoming build video, so make sure you're subscribed if you are interested in seeing that. I'm going to use these templates that I made to do a rough cut of the parts over on the bandsaw, getting as close as I can to the line, but not cutting into it. One great feature of this bit is that it has a bearing on the top as well as the bottom. Then I'm sticking down my template back on this white oak with some double sided tape. This template will ride along this top bearing here and will have exact duplicates. Watch this. a nice clean cut that's really nice even on the end grain here no tear out smooth it's not all chattery listen to the hum this bit makes though that'll put the fear of God in ya but it works really really well never will I ever put that in a handheld router and use it that way this beast needs to be stationary. I keep reminding myself to focus because I don't want to catch it wrong and have it sent across the room. Or worse yet, pull my hand into it. Whatever part of your body touches this spinning bit, you're not getting back. I did get some chip out on this one, and that was because of the grain direction. I was coming at it this way, and it caught the edge of the grain here. One advantage of this bit, though, is that it's got a bearing on the top and the bottom. So what I can do to help prevent that on future pieces, I don't know if I'm going to be able to salvage this piece, but you can put the template on the bottom and ride that along the bottom bearing, and that way you can see when your grain changes direction. You can't see that from the top quite as well. So yes, this is a solution, but it does introduce a new danger though, because now all this bit is exposed. So I have to be very mindful not to have my push pads anywhere near that spinning bit and just reposition as I'm moving around. I can do it. I was hoping I wouldn't have to do it this way, but at least I have the flexibility with this bit to be able to. I've got the template on the bottom, and the template's going to follow the bottom bearing here because in along these curves, the grain changes directions a couple times. It's going downhill until we get up about here, and then it goes uphill. So the bit is spinning this way, and it can lift these fibers up and tear out. So I'm going to stop right here, and then start again here where I'm going downhill again and I can get all the way around the end and then on this other curve I'm safe all the way till here I'm gonna stop there and then skip this part and then start again here and work my way to the end and around the end and then I'm gonna lower the bit back down flip this over and finish off the routing on the other side. Does that make sense?
it leaves a nice smooth surface. Wow. These are the back slats for the Adirondack with the lumbar curve and the curve up for the back. And I've got three that are exactly the same. Uh, except for this chip out one. I probably am not going to be able to fix that. Two down, 11 more to go. It's okay to make a couple extra anyway. I'm going to keep going with the rockers. The cutting height on this one is about 2 inches, or 50 millimeters, and the diameter is about 1 inch, or 24 millimeters. And I haven't even talked about this yet, but this bit will basically stay sharp forever. Because not only are these carbide inserts replaceable, but each of these carbide inserts, all four edges are sharp. So whenever the first edge does get dull, which is going to take a long time because Carbide is a lot harder and stay sharp 10 times longer than high-speed steel. This looks a lot like the helical cutter head that I put in my DeWalt planer. In fact, Find By Tool liked that video that I made installing the cutter head so much that they asked me to make this video about this bit. Anyway, when the first edge does ever get dull, then you can use this tool that they send you and loosen the screw that holds in the cutter and rotate it 90 degrees and then you get a new sharp edge and you can do that rotation up to three times so this thing is going to stay sharp basically forever. As scary as it looks, this is a pretty awesome bit. I will say this though, if you're thinking about getting a bit like this, you should already have some experience with the router. This is not a beginner bit. And it's not cheap. It's one of those buy once cry once type of deals. But if you are thinking about getting this bit, use my discount code in the description and make sure you're out safe. I'm going to keep going with this rocking Adirondack. Adirondacker? Adirondacker? 